Good morning to Coffee and Prayer. You can see I've got the Grace Cafe. Oh, what could be better than that? Turn the cup around magically. Envision our future. Oh, get my fingers out of the way. There we go. What's on your cup? Good morning, I'm Ted Peters. It's the 25th Sunday after Pentecost, next Sunday. First Sunday of Advent, but between now and then on Thursday, it's Thanksgiving Day. Wednesday evening, that's Thanksgiving Eve, we will have an online Thanksgiving worship service. We've got lots to thank God for. Not just the rain, but helping us see through the darkness of 2020 and dark in so many ways. So we'll thank God for whatever light we've been given. Let me open today's worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please join me in the prayer of the day. The Lord be with you. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service, and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world that you have made. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who reigns with you with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our psalm today is Psalm 97, verses 1 through 7. The Lord is King. Let the earth rejoice. Let the many coastlands be glad. Clouds and thick darkness are all around him. Righteousness and justice are the foundation of his throne. Fire goes before him and consumes his adversaries on every side. His lightnings light up the world. The earth sees and trembles. The mountains melt like wax before the Lord, before the Lord of all the earth. The heavens proclaim his righteousness, and all the peoples behold his glory. All worshipers of images are put to shame those who make their boast in worthless idols. All gods bow down before him. Here ends the psalm. Our epistle reading today is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope to which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe, according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Here ends the reading.
The reading is from Ephesians, first chapter, starting with the 15th verse. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love towards all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers. I pray that God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him. So... With the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may know what is the hope in which he has called you. What are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints? And what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe according to the working of his great power? God put this power to work in Christ. When he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion, and above every name is the name, not only is the age, but also the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head of over all things for the church, which is his body the fullness of him who fills all in all. Word of God, word of life. The Gospel for this, the 25th Sunday after Pentecost, is found in the 25th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, verses 31 to 46. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him. Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You that are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty and you gave me nothing to drink. 
I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry or thirsty, or a stranger or naked, or sick or in prison, and did not take care of you? And he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Here ends the gospel for this morning. Well, another sip of the French roast. The book of Revelation in the New Testament, the last book of the Bible, do you know what it's called in Greek? It's called the Apocalypse. Perhaps you know what an apocalypse is. We have three apocalypses, I don't know how to pronounce that word in the plural, three apocalypses by Jesus. One is in Mark chapter 13. Another is in the Gospel of Luke chapters 21 and 22. And then this passage, which we just read from Matthew chapter 10. 25 on the last judgment, the final judgment. Well, it's not clear whether Jesus is the judge or a king is the judge or God is the judge. But there's going to be a judgment. We don't get to the dawn until we've passed through the darkness. The symbol of the Christian faith is a man dying on the cross. Oh, yes, God promises a new creation and a heavenly life. But we've got to go through the door of the cross if we want to get to resurrection. And part of that is judgment. And the judge, as Jesus describes it, is like a shepherd who separates goats from sheep. I want to be a sheep. I don't know about you. I don't want to be a goat. But how do you get to be a sheep? Well, you feed someone who's hungry, you give a drink to someone who is thirsty, you visit someone who's lonesome and in prison, you heal someone who is sick. When your neighbor has a need, you want to help. And, says Jesus, when you have helped somebody unknowingly you have helped Jesus Christ himself. I used to say to my children that when we saw a homeless person or someone desperately in need that that was Jesus. At the grocery store we frequented, there was a homeless man who uh, sat out there and frequently on the way out, uh, we would uh, give him something, uh, either money or something we just bought. And uh, I'd say, you know, this is like giving to Jesus. One day, Kathy Kim, my daughter, I don't know if she was seven years old or so, she sat me down and she said, Daddy, you know that man down at the grocery store that we sometimes give things to? Yeah. Now, you said he's Jesus, right? I said, that's right. He's Jesus. Daddy, I don't think he's Jesus. 
Well, why not? Well, because he smokes, and I don't think Jesus would smoke. As you've done it unto one of the least of these, says Jesus, you have done it unto me. Now, one of the other qualities of the sheep over against the goats in Jesus's last judgment apocalypse is that those who do these compassionate and caring things hardly realize <laughs> what they're doing. <laughs> it's just sort of automatic. Somebody's in need, I'm there to help. And they say that about heroes, that quite frequently heroes who rush in to save a person in danger don't think about it. They just do it. And Jesus says, if you do that, you're doing it to me. There's a classic story about a great Scottish preacher. We Western Christians think of the Scots as the Scottish Presbyterians as producing the great uh, preachers, or at least we did in the, in the early 20th century, before the televangelists came along. And so imagine this preacher named Ian McGregor in Edinburgh. And Ian has a nightmare. And it goes like this. Ian finds himself on Judgment Day. Actually, it's the day after Judgment Day. And he's approaching heaven and the pearly gates. And there's a lectern there. And then St. Peter is there. St. Peter is there to guard the heavenly gates. And uh, Ian McGregor walks up and... Uh, pokes St. Peter to get some attention, looks at his watch, says, uh, I'm on my way to heaven, and, um, uh, you know, I, ha I don't have too much time, uh, St. Peter. Um, and Peter says, and, and who are you? I am Ian McGregor. Well, St. Peter opens up his laptop and goes to Google, and McGregor says, what are you doing that for? He says, well, you know, the Book of Life had gotten so big we had to digitize it. Ian McGregor. McGregor, Ian, I don't find your name here. What? My name is not... I am Ian McGregor. I am the Reverend Ian McGregor. Look under Reverend Ian McGregor. So, St. Peter types a little bit more. No, I'm sorry. There's no Reverend... Ian McGregor in the book of life here. Um, I, I am the most prominent preacher in all of Edinburgh. Certainly my name must be in the book of life. Why, I was pastor for 40 years. People came from all around Scotland to hear my sermons. My church grew in size. In fact, I had to build a bigger building. I am the Reverend Ian McGregor. Please check Google one more time. St. Peter says, well, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 no, there's no, no Reverend Ian McGregor here. In, in the book of life. And now oh, oh, Pastor McGregor is getting upset and, and St. Peter says, let me try one more thing. And he types some stuff in. He says, well, I do have an Ian McGregor here, a six-year-old boy who went down to Princess Street in the middle of the winter to feed the pigeons. Now, that name is in the Book of Life. Could that have been you? Well, yes. When I was a little boy, I, I fed the pigeons on Princess Street in the cold of winter. And St. Peter, with that, stands up straight. The, the gates of heaven open. And St. Peter says, Mr. McGregor, come right on in. The Lord of the Sparrows wants to say thank you.
join me now, won't you, in the prayers of intercession. The Lord be with you. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church on earth. Sovereign of all, train our ears to hear your cry and the needs of those around us. Bless all social ministries of the church, including Noah here at Cross and Crown, through which we seek to serve others as we ourselves have been served. O Holy Spirit, inspire the prayers arising from within us. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Did you say hear our prayer out loud? Thank you, God, for saints now departed who fed the hungry, clothed the naked, and tended to the sick. Inspire us by their example. Oh, God, you are our rainbow of promise in your mercy. Hear our prayer. We pray, O oh God, for peace and justice in the world, for a full embrace of racial equality and compassion, for concord during this time of political rivalry and so many unknowns, for the heads of state, for legislators and local civic leaders and all those newly elected and about to be installed in their offices, that they enact wise procedures to lead us into a wholesome and prosperous future. Oh God, you're a mighty fortress. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, oh God, for all in need, for those suffering for the faith, those who are poor or hungry or homeless, for the healthcare workers on the front line of the COVID challenge, and for these now in the cross and crown family. Debbie and Scott, Barb, Bob, Alexandra and her family, Linda, Bill, Pam, Bob, Dutch and Becky, Charles and Richard. We're thinking now about those with more long-term healing concerns, Joanne and Carol, Gabe, Chris, Chris, Roger, Sawyer, Ed, and Mark. The Homebound, Robert and Leona, Dick and Dorothy, Ruth, Pastor Leon, Beverly, Jenny, and Norma, the 100-year-old. Let's pray for Norma. Oh, God, you are the healer of our every ill. In your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our thanks for all who have died in the faith and bring us at the final resurrection into your everlasting life where sorrows will be no more. Into your gracious and mighty hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Join me, won't you, now in praying out loud the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Before it gets too cold, one more sip from Grace Cafe.
Almighty God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, bless us now and forever. Amen. Join us Thanksgiving Eve in which we'll offer some prayers of thanksgiving to God. So between now and then, think all the things that you've got to be grateful for. Cultivate that attitude of gratitude. Bye-bye.